but there's satanic influences in our schools that I think people should be transparent about. What are some of those satanic influences? I used to worry, frankly, about mostly about science teachers contradicting theology teachers. Now what I really worry about is school counselors. So mm -hmm. after COVID, massive amount of, and, and Sean thinks about this a lot in the school choice context. There's kind of a, a bargain we're making here to get school choice money, tax credit scholarships, ESA, that the government won't come in and regulate the schools more. But in COVID, we got, you know, and, and I was part of the active effort to lobby for this money. So, so, uh, but there was one aspect I didn't understand. They listed all the categories we could get COVID money for. And if we didn't get COVID money, we frankly would have been wiped out. But, but uh, one of the categories was mental health services, which makes sense. But what there isn't an adequate supply at the moment of psychologists and school counselors who believe in Catholicism. Yeah. So if you think of, the other thing is, and remember, this is Boston, right? So ground zero for the abuse scandal. So you think of the way a counseling session works out. It's a private discussion behind closed doors that's highly confidential. And I, I'm going like, are you? So I, first time I heard this from a principal, like, you don't know what they're talking about. Well, it's confidential. It's like, you know, going to a psychiatrist. I'm going like behind closed doors with a little kid with no supervision in Boston. Like, are you out of your mind? Like what could possibly go wrong, right? But what the danger is, is I'm not actually uh, worried on the abuse side because that's been basically tamped down in Boston a long time ago, long before I showed up. But it's more theological abuse, by which I mean is the secular answer and the Catholic answer is not the same on so many different issues. So if somebody wants to set up a club, for example, that wouldn't be appropriate in a Catholic school, the Catholic response theologically is different than the secular response was, hey, yeah, let's do it, right? And then similarly, if you decide, for example, on the gender issue, a boy decides he wants to become a girl, the answer on the Catholic side is different than it is on the secular side, right? If you uh, accidentally get pregnant uh, and you're contemplating terminating the pregnancy, the secular answer is different than the Catholic answer. If you're enduring suffering or experiencing suffering, it could be you personally, or it could be a grandmother died, or you found out your mother has breast cancer, whatever it might be, the secular answer, and again, the Catholic answer is different. There is no secular version of redemptive suffering. So what I'm concerned is we took this money from the federal government, and I don't think this was by design of the federal government. They just put out the money for everybody. They spend it any way they want. But because there's not an adequate supply of Catholic psychologists and school counselors and psychiatrists, we end up hiring a bunch of secular people that don't agree with any of their first premises. Forget about, I used to say, they don't agree with everything from human AV day forward, right? Now they don't even agree with Genesis, right? So like, this is the whole kit and caboodle. So I think that's a really, I haven't been able to solve that in my five years, I started and I've been recruiting people out of Divine Mercy University down in Virginia and Franciscan University, both of whom have rock solid programs that I think people can trust in. But, um, you know, and, and, and I actually have people at other Catholic colleges suggesting that I not recruit out of their colleges. But I think people have to be very careful on something as intimate as a school counseling conversation, uh, that you have the person in there and the parents have to be the schools have to send the message that this is not a fully confidential conversation in a school context. Parents of the, we believe is an article of faith that parents are the first educators of their children. They have to be a partner in what medical care or mental health services their children receive. And we cannot be complicit in keeping secrets from parents that concern their children. These are very important decisions and a parent has to be fully aware. So I, I've been preaching the gospel on that one across all of our schools, but we, we have a huge talent problem there that has to be solved. And if you were trying to destroy, if you were trying to destroy a generation of children, I can't think of a more sinister way to do it uh, than to do it, taking a child at their most vulnerable moment and leading them astray.